All right, we're looking at chapter five, key issue three. Why do individual languages vary? Well, languages, they have dialects. You may, everybody may be speaking English, but there's different dialects. Dialect is a regional variation of a language distinguished by distinct vocabulary, spelling, and pronunciation. An isogloss is a word uses boundary. This is the separation line where you're going to find different dialects on either side. U.S. Eastern dialects. We're looking at the East Coast over here. So what are the dialects in this eastern portion of the United States? Well, we got these different dialects through settlement during the colonial period. As people move in, they're coming from different places. Therefore, they're speaking different versions of English. In the north, we've got the Puritans that move in, and they have very simplified, straightforward, straightforward language. In the middle regions here, we've got the Quakers, the Scots, Irish, and German, people of many different backgrounds, so you're going to have a lot more influences. It's going to be much more diverse. And then in the south, we've got uh, the prevalence of prisoners and servants, so you're going to have language that's, that's more simplified, and um, it's going to be different than straight-up Puritan English. Current U.S. dialects, current U.S. dialects and pronunciation. I really love it when I screw up. I can't even speak. Why? Why am I teaching about English and pronunciation and dialects? Because I mess up all the time. All right, but here I am. I'm doing it anyways. <laughs> okay. So currently in the United States, we have four major U.S. dialect regions. We've got the North, the South, and you think about what is the dialect in the South? I think it's when they start talking like this here. We're in the south, uh, from Texas, all right? That was an exaggeration, but in any case. We've got the uh, four major dialects. In the southeast, we're thinking about the way people speak, and they use things that might sound like two syllables. So instead of saying half, we might be saying half. Or if we say mine, they might say mine. So we're breaking it down into two syllables. In the northeast... We're doing things like dropping our R, where we might say heart, they might say hot. Use your hot. Or if we've got lark, which is a bird, they might just say lock. Oh, it's a lock. I mean, we don't even say lark very often in any case these days, but whatever. Soft drinks. You think about how people pronounce what they are drinking as far as uh, soft drinks. In the Northeast, we're saying soda. I actually used to live in the Northeast for a while, but I don't remember anybody saying soda. I remember people saying Coke. But this is anyway, this is what Rubenstein says is, is what people say. In the Northeast and Southwest, people are saying soda. In the Midwest, in the Great Plains, in the Northwest, people are saying pop. Hey, give me my pop. You want to go, you want to go after school for some, for some pop? In the, in the South, we say Coke. Just all of it falls into one category, Coke. Doesn't matter if it's 7-Up or Dr. Pepper. We just say, let's go get a Coke. Oh, boy. Okay. So this is a video that one of my students found. That's just amazing. We talk about regional dialects. One of the interesting things that you can look at is how people call cows. Um, there's many different ways. Some people, if you're standing in a pasture, you're going to call across for your cows to come home and, and feed them food. You might say things like, Koo You know, that's regional dialect. People say things for different ways. This one is just really funny and interesting, and it, it's a way of bringing languages to life. So I want to show you parts Chris of it. Carr, Seymour, Illinois. This is people calling in the hogs. So this is people calling in the hogs. I believe this is the Iowa State Fair. This is their championship. Come on, pig. Piggy. Come on, piggy. I mean, these people really get into it. It's just, <laughs> it's awesome. All right, bringing languages to life. So I've actually grew up in this city, so, but 
I actually studied this and watched it and watched it. So we'll see how well I do today. A guy from New York studying languages. We got one more. Thank you. One more. All right, you get the idea. And uh, you're, you're probably asking, why in the world is he showing me this? And I admit, you don't need to see that. You um, can just move on and get through the information. You don't need this to score high on an AP exam. But it's just, it brings, brings it to life. These people are very passionate about their language, their dialect, how they call in the cows. And I just think it's fun because these guys, they had a state championship at their fair about it. So it's just a really good illustration. Um, and the guy who studied from New York City, he was the one that actually ends up winning. So let me make sure I finish it. Okay. Dialects in the United Kingdom. Standard language. This is a dialect that's well established and widely recognized as the most acceptable. In the United Kingdom, they have RP, or received pronunciation. This is the standard language of England, and it's used by the upper class, the residents of London. It diffused from Cambridge and Oxford universities. And it's uh, diffused through grammar books and dictionaries. This was a, they, what they considered the proper language. So within the United Kingdom, Southerners pronounce grass, like gross. Like, I've got to move the gross, right? Northerners presents things like uh, butter with booter. I'm going to have some booter, which sounds weird to us in uh, the United States. But in the English, they're very peculiar. They're very specific about their language. And there's a really cool clip from the movie My Fair Lady, which goes specifically into dialect and how um, Eliza is not able to pronounce her words correctly because she's from a region of the area that is thought of as more low class. And this guy here, the professor, he, she, he's trying to see if he can teach her how to speak high class. It's just like a minute long, so let's just take a listen to it. It's pretty fun. Say your vowels. I oh, know my vowels. I know before I come. Well, if you know them, say them. A A I O U. Oh. A E I O U. That's what I said. A E R O U. That's what I've been saying for three days. I won't say them no more. Fine. All right, Eliza. Say it again. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. Didn't I say that? No, Eliza, you didn't say that. You didn't even say that. Again, Eliza. How kind of you to let me come. How kind of you to let me come. No, kind of you, kind of you, kind. How kind of you to let me come. How kind of you to let me no, come. No, no, kind of you, kind of you. It's like cup of tea, kind of you. Cup of tea. Say, say cup of tea. Cup of tea. No, no, a cup of tea. Four, five, six marbles. Now, I want you to read this and I want you to enunciate every word just as if the marbles were not in your mouth. With that is more about. Oh, I can't. I can't. 
Okay, so yeah, this is an older movie, and you, you might even think of it as kind of sexist because here's this gentleman that's teaching this poor younger girl how to talk the right way. But it's this is an illustration of the traditional English language being very important to them in England, in London specifically. And moving forward, make sure we got that. Yep. British American dialects of English. Americans don't speak RP because of isolation. We're not the same specifically recognized English traditionally from London because of distance and isolation. We actually created our own, our own new version of English because with the new world came in new words and new varying dialects. The vocabulary was different because we had new words that were created with new objects found in the new world here in North America. Spelling was different. One specific reason is because Noah Webster created the American Dictionary because he had pride for the United States and he wanted us to stand separately from the English of England. He would spell things like honor instead of the English version of honor, the, the British English. He, in the United States, would spell color this way instead of color in England. And pronunciation is different. We say fast and path. In England, they say it more like fast and poth because it's more proper that way. That's RP. Americans say secretary, but in British, they say secretary, right? You think of the James Bond movies. Um, and here's more examples of that same setup. And these are kind of interesting to look at. Whereas we say gas in the United States, they say petrol. We say truck, they say lorry. And it goes on and on from there. Distinguishing between languages and dialects. Romance branch dialects. Specifically, we're looking at Spanish and Portuguese. Well, you used to have this language called Castilian. Castilian arose during the 9th century in Old Castile, Spain. It spread over the next 100 years. and It became the official language. But regional dialects such as Aragon, Navarre, Leon, and Asturias and Santander survived in secluded rural areas. So you had Castilian that developed, but rural areas developed their own little language pockets. The official language, of course, in Spain is now called Spanish. Portuguese developed as a separate language, a separate language due to the separation of the Pyrenees Mountains. So you've got um, France, which is more northern and eastern, and you've got Spain that's more uh, southern and western, and because of the Pyrenees Mountains, it separated them. You've got these individual languages. Due to the worldwide colonial activities, Spanish and Portuguese spread to the Western Hemispheres. Spanish is now spoken in 18 countries in Latin America, and Portuguese is prevalent in Brazil. It seems like it's so much more, but you think about Brazil is a huge land mass, so it actually it incorporates a lot of people in that area as well. Differences still remain between these countries. Both Spanish and Portuguese speakers have operations to standardize the language. They've, they've, they've done things to make the languages lasting and regulate it to where it doesn't have all these variation between countries. The standardization of the language spreads culture between the countries through books, TV, and printed materials. So here's some examples of where we're trying to figure out if things are a dialect or a language. Is it all within the same language and just it's just a different dialect or is it different languages? It, it can be difficult to do that because they can be very similar. Examples, in Italy, you've got several languages that used to be dialects. Now they're considered independent. In Catalan, Valencian, Bailar, you used to have Catalan separate, but now it's got Valencian, Bailar that are still considered dialects. If you can hear that screaming next door, that's, a, that's another classroom that's just gone crazy. I think because they're hearing me explain languages to them, and they're really excited. Um, Gaelican. This is still debated as a possible dialect of Portuguese, but then again, maybe it's a distinct language. They, they're not able to really decide and, and keep that one way or the other. Moldovan. This is the official language of Moldova, but it's only a dialect of Romanian. But the thing is, uh, Romanian uses Roman letters, while Moldovan uses the Cyrillic letters similar to Russian. So which way is it? Creole, French Creole in Haiti, and Portuguese Creole in Cape Verde Islands. Are these languages or are they dialects? Are they separate or is it all part of one language? These are areas where that is in debate. Creole or a Creolized language is a language that results from the mixing of the colonizer's language with the indigenous languages of people being dominated. So we think about a Creolized language Thinking about the, the, the Haitians, where they, they're using French because France 
colonized Haiti. Same thing with Cape Verde Islands, where you've got the Portuguese going in there. So they're speaking versions of Portuguese, but it's creolized. That's our look at Kyushu 3.